Hi, this is Ken. I apologize in advance. I know Samantha's voice sounds way better than mine. I'm just doing some real quick basic setup within our AWS account. And I don't want to spend that time basically just writing out an episode, having to record it when it's fairly basic stuff. But some of this I also don't want you to miss. So I just figured I would record it in case that's useful for anyone. Um, but again, I apologize because I know she does sound way, way, way better. And hopefully I'll get another episode out with her recording very soon. Let me go and get started. So right now I have a brand new AWS account. There's basically nothing done whatsoever other than I did create a uh, IAM user though. Let me go to IAM real quick. Because when you sign up for AWS, you do get a root user. And you don't want to use that root user for really anything. It's a best practice to immediately set up a new user. So right here I have my user that I just created. And again, this is not the root account. And I've also created a admin group or admin group. And I have two policies that I made on this. So one of these is um, admin access. It's basically give me access to do anything and everything on everything only if I have my MFA token enabled. So I did that obviously another best practice for security reasons. The other part of that is I have um, this, which is kind of a big, big confusing looking policy, but I just Googled AWS require MFA policy. And this is the first one that comes up and it's directly on Amazon's site. And what this does is it's basically saying hey, the user can't do anything when they're not logged in with the MFA with the exception of set up their MFA. Because uh, you kind of get a chicken or egg thing like, oh, I can't do anything without MFA and I can't set up my MFA. So this is what fixes that. So all of that's already done. And this user right here and that group, those are the only things that I've created in this account. And they're the only things that I'm not sure if I'll actually do within Terraform. I might, but I'm not really worried about right now because I need these to just get going. The other thing that I did is I did AWS configure. I put in the access key and secret that I created. You can create one when you go under your username and you go to my security credentials. That's where you create your access tokens. I did that so I can authenticate with my CLI. I'm also using a tool called Assume from Trek 10. It is amazing when you have lots of AWS accounts. On this laptop, I don't think I have any other than this one set up at the moment. But you can see where it says MFA yes, and it's got my account, region, all of that. This is loading from, I'm not going to open it because it's got, actually I can load the config but not the credentials. So here you can see I'm saying default to yes east one for my region. And this is my MFA. Whenever I try to authenticate, it's going to ask me for my MFA token. Let me do that now real quick. Reopen and we run Assume. You don't have to use it. It's just a nice, helpful little wrapper. Oh, it's so good because I, I literally just put in my MFA a little bit ago. But there's another file that I won't show right here, credentials. And that's what Assume is looking for that has my access key and my um, secret key. So it's better. And the thing that I'm going to do in this episode is instead of making a bunch of stuff through the UI, I'm starting off the right way and I'm going to use infrastructure as code for literally everything. So the tool that I'm going to use is called Terraform. And what I will do first is uh, Terraform stores a state about basically everything in your environment. And it uses that so when you try to apply or destroy, it knows what's there. By default, if you don't do anything, it's going to store in a directory right there with your Terraform code. You don't want to do that though for a couple reasons. One is the state has secrets and I will be committing that repo to GitHub. I'll actually make it public for any of you to look at in case you want to reuse portions of it. Another reason is that you have five different people running Terraform and you have the state file in Git and they all check it out. Someone applies something no one else is going to have the updated version of that state file. It just does not work well. I've actually seen uh, different companies start out like that and they run into problems really, really quickly. And the other issue that you run into is what if two people try to run Terraform both on the same things at the same time or destroy at the same time? To fix both of those issues, you need to set up a backend for your state as well as something to handle state locking. One of the ways that works really, really well 
is to just spin up an S3 bucket for handling your state files and then use DynamoDB for your state locking. And it's super, super easy. I'm actually going to use Terraform to spin those up, even though I'm just going to use those to store Terraforms back in. So it's kind of one of those chicken or egg things. Uh, so I do have a empty folder. Let me make a git repo for it. DevOps library. I have one repo that has all of the code for Addy. This is going to be the infrastructure uh, for Addy. So I'm just going to do Addy dash infrastructure as code. Uh, Terraform for is code. Actually, make this public. I am doing this so that anyone watching can reuse this. I'm just letting you know normally you wouldn't do that. I could initialize it with a readme. Is there a template for Terraform? Yes, thank you. Let me actually get rid of this folder. Whoa, I almost got rid of the wrong one. Then let me cd into it. I just got a nice readme. I thought it had a, it might get ignore. Oh, okay, there's one, okay. It's hidden, duh. Good search of the period. And perfect. So that get ignore that it gave me is already going to ignore the um, Terraform state files because nobody that knows what they're doing stores those with their Git repos. So this is perfect. I am going to add a main.tf. So the way Terraform works, it's going to look for any TF file in here. It doesn't matter what I name it. The name is totally preference. I'm just starting out with main. I'm definitely going to split this up into multiple files. But yeah, I'm just making a Terraform file right now. I'm going to use the AWS provider. A provider with Terraform is just like, you might have a GCP provider. You might have a, there's a lot of them. That's not the page I wanted. This is the page I want to, uh, yeah. See, there's like a billion providers. This is what you want to control with Terraform. I am wanting to control stuff in AWS. Let me open up my terminal. Oh, let me see if I have the right version of Terraform now, the latest. Four. I'm using TF EMV on this laptop. Are you kidding me? Okay, so what I'm doing right now is, uh, and I usually have this on all my computers, I'm surprised I didn't have it on this one. So tfm is basically used to manage your version of Terraform that you have installed. I like it because I often work on different projects that are on different versions. I want the latest uh, for my stuff. There's no reason to start with an older version. So I'm just seeing what the latest is. Latest stable. Sorry, I'm not going to use this alpha version. That would be dumb. tfm install so I'm going to install oh 14.4 was latest so I didn't need to do all this but tfm is just really handy perfect and tfm views uh that's just saying like I want to switch to that right now so this is just going to say the same version yeah but later on in life when new version comes out it's as easy as doing like that or whatever tfm views and then I can switch to it so it just makes my life easier later on Anyway, I just need to initialize Terraform. And yeah, I don't have anything going, but it's going to get my provider, the AWS provider. Well, that's loading. Let me just search for Terraform. Let's see, we'll do the S3 bucket first. I just want a basic bucket and I do want versioning enabled. Mm -mm -mm -mm. S3 bucket first run TF state TF bucket. So one of the things with S3 buckets is they are in a global namespace. Uh, what I mean by that is whatever name you use, no one on the planet can use the same name. So this is taken, I will be so upset, and then I will just change like one character. Um, but yeah, uh, just keep that in mind. Like if you have two accounts and you try to use the same bucket name and you're creating two buckets, it's going to fail. Let me just show you like what I'm doing. Normally I'd be going in here, like if I was going to do it the UI method, I'm gonna not do infrastructure as code. I need to delete some stuff in here. 
This one I definitely can't because that is some backups of a awesome Minecraft server. Um, but yeah, I'm creating a bucket. And if I leave it on private, that's the same thing as saying block all public access, which is good. I don't want anyone to touch my uh, Terraform state stuff. I do want versioning. Um, this is versioning just like what you would think of with Git or Dropbox or whatever. This is super important when you're doing your Terraform state because you could, you probably won't, but you could have something horrible happen where your state gets corrupted. I haven't seen that. I've seen other weird things, but just know that you want to do this. That way you can always revert and fix your state if you have to. So yeah, this looks good. Private is good. Versioning is good. Let me just try to create it and hopefully that bucket doesn't already exist. So, yep. Terraform saying, I'm going to create this bucket if you say yes. And I do want that. So, say yes. See this little lock that came up? That, no, not that one. The little gray one. Let me destroy this real quick and you'll see it. So I'm not actually going to destroy it, I just wanted you to see this little guy. This is the thing I was talking about. So say you were using some weird file share, a DFS share or an FS or whatever, for your Terraform code, which that's not where I would put it, but say you were. Right now, it created this little lock. This is what I was talking about that I'm going to use DynamoDB for. But if someone had this lock file, actually here, this is perfect. I'll just do it on my end. Terraform destroy. So, I've got this waiting, and that little lock is there. So what happens when I try to do a destroy somewhere else? In the same folder, it says, oh, can't do it because it's locked. Like someone else is doing it. So that's what this little guy's for. But as you can see, it doesn't matter if it's stored here because it's literally just on my laptop. So that's why I'm going to store this thing uh, basically in DynamoDB. I'm not going to destroy that bucket. We were lucky enough to get a bucket that had a name that I liked. Uh, let me go over here. There it is, right here. Nice empty little bucket. And there's nothing in it. Versioning is enabled. Permissions. I do want to block all public access. I thought I had said that. One second. No. Oh. I guess it's a separate uh, resource for blocking everything. Um, it didn't look like anything was enabled, but I actually want to see that thing show that it's completely blocked. Uh, so this resource is referencing a different resource, this guy. So that right there, here's the ID, or that's the name of the resource. So I put that here. Oh, I just copied that. Yeah. This here. So this is saying, when I run this, I'm going to look up this bucket right here and get its ID, and I will block public access. I guess I just need all these. I block. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this bucket is completely locked down. It has nothing in it. And I want to, oh, let me share something real quick. Uh, these two files, this is the Terraform state I was talking about. So like say I do Terraform destroy, how does it know what I even have? It stores it all in that state. So it's like, hey, you got all this. Would you like to kill it? No, I can use Terraform state list. And you can see everything in the state file. This is the actual state file. It is a giant, well, not giant. It's pretty small right now, but it's just a bunch of JSON. It shouldn't have any secrets yet that I care about, but this is what I'm going to move into my S3 bucket instead of storing it here, because you don't want it with the repo itself. And to do that, you set up a Terraform backend. Uh, I'm going to use S3. There's other things you can use. S3 works extremely well. I'm just going to put it under provider tf. Uh, 
even though this is backend um, and this is the provider, I usually actually backend is probably a better term. So it doesn't matter where you, which file you, and where you store everything because Terraform will automatically do what it needs to do to figure out the order for running everything. I like to keep the provider and backend stuff separate. Um, it doesn't matter. Just make it a little bit easier for finding what you need. Uh, the bucket that I'm going to store my state in is this little dude. Um, Tiff bucket ID. Okay, so the key, this is the actual path within your bucket. If this was like some huge company, I would put a ton of thought into that, especially when I'm like dealing with multiple teams, that type of thing. I'll see infrastructure. Let me try running this real quick. Oh, you uh, do a Terraform init, sorry, when you change your backend. Oh, and you can't use variables there. I wondered about that. That makes sense. It's that whole chicken rig thing. So I am going to paste that in right here. It should it ask me a question in a second? Yep. So it's saying, would you like to move your current state, these little guys, this is just a backup, and this is the current one. Would you like to move that to S3? I'm going to say yes. It finished initializing. I look here, my Terraform state file is gone. There's like nothing in it. There is a backup. I don't care about either of these. I'm going to nuke them from orbit. And let me check out my S3 bucket real quick. Hello, little bucket. Can I see you? Open. There, so you can see uh, that's been moved to S3. That's perfect. If I was sharing this with people that were all working from it at the same time, they could get the newest version immediately from S3 while they're working on it. Now I need to create a DynamoDB table. I want like the simplest one. There we go, thank you. All right. Oh, I had that blog, I believe, is from an older version of Terraform. How old was this blog? Yep, 2017. Giant fail. Let me see. that real quick. Perfect. Look like. All right, perfect. So DynamoDB is a, uh, a NoSQL database that basically scales to infinite. Um, I mean that like it really scales uh, crazy. Uh, there's nothing in it right now, but there will be because I changed the backend. Keep forgetting. I'm trying to destroy it, so I need it to hang there for a second. All right, there should be a lock right now. Oh, I don't care about these messages. Yeah, there it is. See it? So this is that little lock file, if you remember right, um, and it's storing it in this NoSQL database. So if anyone else tried to run this Terraform the exact same time, it would tell them no. Nope. Uh, and that lock should go away. Let me look. Yep. Good luck. Perfect. So anyway, I have a gig more set up and everything, so we should be good to go. Um, git add, git commit, basic, both s3 bucket and demo db. So that is it for this episode. All I did was set up a s3 bucket, uh, locked it down, uh, DynamoDB for locking, and I told Terraform to use all of that for my backend. So we haven't really created anything for Addy specifically yet, uh, but we do have like the basic everything that we need for Terraform ready to go. And if you want, uh, I did push this out, so if anyone is following along and wants to use this, here it is. This is obviously going to grow quite a bit really soon. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon.